Hi, my name is Arnold Guabahizi and today we are going to talk about art. So in this presentation we'll be talking about the introduction, Yellow's Lamentation, Donatello's David, Ruben's Elevation of the Cross, David's Oath of the Horatii, Manis Olympia, Picasso's Le Demoiselle d'Avignon, and then we compare some paintings and finally we have a conclusion. So unlike uh, in the old, in these current days, uh, uh, the world is dominated by technology. In the ancient times, the artists were, were more likely to be active through paintings, songs, poems, sculptures. And in this presentation, I'm going to explore some sculptures and paintings that mark the history in ancient times. So we'll start by the Lamentation. The Lamentation is a painting that was painted by Giotto di Bondone. It was painted in 1305. It depicts the after Jesus Christ's death when the, his followers and his mother and the angels were mourning him. As you can see there, his mother is scratching over him and there are angels in the sky and several followers that are surrounding him. So this painting, this painting was was painted using an naturalistic style, which means it was very simple. As you can see, the 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 background is just a, a blue color. There we have a landscape and a, what looks like a dead tree, and also the 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 followers and all the the other characters in the painting are clothed. We whereby they are also showing their, their grief in different ways. There are some throwing their arms, some are tearing their clothes. Yeah, and also this picture, this painting is mainly focused on a Catholic, a Catholic theme because as we know, uh, Jesus Christ was, uh, is, is the son of God in the Catholic religion. And uh, the, the the painting brings about the essence of simplicity, whereby they they are just uh, they are just characters in the painting, and also in a very easy background. Uh, we can see that there is Mary's mother's motherly love that is expressed to this painting. As you can see, she's crouching over Jesus. She's she's holding holding him with her with her hand and like raising him. A little bit using her her right knee. Uh, this shows how much she cared about him, and also, as you saw in the picture before, there were angels in in grief and humans throwing their arms here and there because they are they are grieving the death of Jesus. So, the painting fo mainly focuses on the on on the pictures on the on the characters that are in the painting rather than the their surrounding. Continue with another piece of art. It was. It is called David. It was a sculpture, a bronze sculpture that was made by Donato di Niccolo di Bertobardi, which who is also known as Donatello. It was made in the 15th century. It it also has a biblical theme because it depicts uh, David from the Bible, King David, but as a young boy after he had uh, fought and won against uh, Goliath. As you can see, there is Goliath's head beneath his left, beneath David's left foot, and also David is holding Goliath's sword. Uh, this this sculpture was was uh, mainly represents the love for the body that was that was uh, mainly used that was, that dates back uh, in in the ancient Romans and Greek times, where they, whereby the the, the paintings and the sculptures will mainly uh, portray characters that are uh, naked. Uh, so this this sculpture mainly talks about David and peace because David had just won and against Goliath. Goliath was the like the main the main fighter in the in the army that was that was fighting against uh, the the King Saul's. Uh, army so David came up and decided to confront him 
and after he succeeded so th there was peace in the in the, in the nations it, it is it is mainly a a, a new renaissance style because as you said before it, it, uh, the the new style of of art was this back in the ancient roman and greek times and the the body is it kind of has a a life it has has its own life because you do the contrapposto because the the position of the of the sculpture you can see david is ready raising he raises his left leg a little bit is also the position of his hands he's like it's like free it's like the painting is full of life as a continuation you can see uh the the the, the sculpture mainly represented god's help to victory this sculpture was was adopted by the foreign florentine people people from florence as a as a public icon a symbol of freedom because as you know in the bible god had helped david win against the goliath zami and also in the 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 florentine people had won with the help of god they had won against uh, the duke of milan so this painting symbolized mainly the freedom and and, and god's help to victory and also after the this 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 sculpture was was made uh the medici family put it in their garden and then they said it was like for them it symbolized their power of over uh, over the Florentine people in in Florence, uh, but then after the after the the Florentine people had chased the the Medici family from the from the from the from Florence, they they used the sculpture and they placed it in the town hall. It was viewed by everyone, and it was uh, more uh, a public icon than, than it was before. So. As we said before, the it, it represents the the conflict between Florence and Milan, because uh, the the Florentine people were were fighting against Milan, against the Duke of Milan, and then God helped them help them win. Uh, it was like the 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 nation of Milan was was represented mainly by the sword. It can be said that the nation of Milan was represented by the sword, while the the nation of Florence was is represented by the stone, which David used mainly to win against Goliath, and then used the sword to cut off his head. So another piece of art that is very interesting is the elevation of the cross. This painting was was created by Peter Paul Rubens. It it was. Made in nine, in sixteen sixteen ten, it was for was the purpose of being put in a in a in a church in a Catholic church in front of the altar. So it depicts the crucifixion of Christ, but mainly the moment when they were putting his cross uh, upright for the crucifixion. As you can see in the painting, there are several uh, citizens that that were trying to to straighten Jesus's cross and also Jesus who is on the cross nailed and also the inscription on the top of the cross uh, this is um, a baroque painting style because meaning it's a, it's a European style of painting it was a painting style that was that originated from Europe it, it was mainly used in some uh, some forms of art like architecture, music, and art, and all all those. But then it was also used in paintings. Uh, as you can see in the painting, there are muscular bodies that are very detailed. You can literally see the muscles, uh, and the leaves of the tree are also very visible. Uh, uh, it's it it has some sort of detail detail to the to it so that it makes it for the for the for the viewer easy to see and interpret uh, here the bodies are used uh, the body is used mainly to, to represent divinity because you can see Jesus on the cross uh, his his body is very very detailed and also very visible so it the 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 body here was used to represent divinity 
and also I said before it was a Catholic theme because the painter was from Flanders which was a Catholic region at the time when the painting was made, was created so there's a Catholic kind of a Catholic theme the whole painting actually is a Catholic theme uh, there is the, that Flemish culture that that pushes the, the the creator to add some detail as you can see uh, there is a man who is like beneath the cross but does not rest there because you can even if you if you look closely you can even see the eyes of the man the way he looks his angry look which is a, a Flemish uh, style of painting so uh, this this painting was reflecting a sensitive like the sensitive topic of religion which was there at the time there was a there was like um, a conflict between Catholics and Protestants so this 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 painter was taking his side saying that the, the, uh, like um this depicting the his his belief in the Catholic religion and also yeah that the 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 conflict between the Catholics and the Protestants was 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 like uh, very tough at the time so and also the church had asked him to to make uh, a painting and also the the, the the religion I originated from was from a Catholic surrounding so this this picture this painting was mainly of a Catholic theme the next painting was is called the oath of the Horatia or the Le Serment de Horace in French it was made by the French painter Jacques Louis David it was painted in 1784 so the main topic of the painting was uh, the fight between Rome and Alba and whereby instead of fighting of sending troops to fight they decided to send three brothers from each side so that they would fight and the the the, the warrior that, was, that, that remained standing uh, his country would have won and so here it is but then they came to find out that the brothers were married were actually intermarried with the with the different nations so here the 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 painting shows the, those brothers despite that those relations between the countries the intermarriages they decide to fight to the death uh, you can see in the painting that the three brothers a father who's holding the swords as the brothers make their oath and also Three women, three women and two children. Those women were the wives of the the brothers who are going to fight. So this painting shows the neoclassicism uh, painting style, which which means that they they refer to the ancient movements, the classical movements from the from the ancient paintings to make this painting. As you see, the brothers. This painting was made in 1784, but you can see the brothers and the the whole environment is from ancient times. And the brothers are making an oath in in several movements that were that were there during the ancient times. Uh, the bodies here are represented are for the men they are strong and rigid, and for the women they are somehow numb and weak because uh, the men were warriors as where, whereby the where, whereas the women were like uh, the they were from just in the house like keeping the house. Uh, clean and, and tidy. So, in addition, this painting tries to, to show the philosophy that was there at the time that uh, women are not patriotic enough. They are they are mainly concerned with with their with their feelings and their their families, rather than being concerned with the 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 whole nation. So, the painting shows a sense of revolution, a sense of patriotism, because uh, those brothers, uh, despite the fact that there were intermarriages between the, their families, they decided to fight for their countries and to die for their countries. Uh, there was a, a strong sense of, uh, as you can see, what the, how the brothers are standing, it, it, there's a strong sense of resolve. Uh, in the activity that is going to take place. So the next painting is is named Olympia. 
which is also the main character in the painting, the naked woman lying on the bed. It was painted by Edouard Manet in 1865. So the painting uh, is of a realism style whereby the painter does not focus on, on illusion and detail, just realism putting it real out there for the people to see. So as you can see, uh, it, the, the woman Olympia is lying on her bed, there is her servant who is holding flowers and also there is also a, a black cat uh, nearby. So this painting, as you can see there is not too much shadow, you can actually see where the, the, the brushes pass. This is uh, a realism style of painting that does not focus on illusion. And here the body depicts uh, sexuality rather than beauty because as you can see the, wom the woman, the Olympia is, is naked without any piece of clothing and it, it challenges the, the viewer uh, to face his or her sexuality because this picture, this painting is all about sexuality rather than uh, beauty because you can, as you can see the Olympia is not as pretty as any old all the other women that are usually painted, uh, usually seen in other paintings, she's not exactly more beautiful than them. Uh, the the painting also relates to the historical times because there were there were many prostitutes named Olympia at that time, and this this the, the, the painting Olympia uh, shows. Uh, Olympia, the she was like a prostitute, and she she's not ashamed of her activities, which is why she confronts directly the the viewer in the eye instead of looking away. As you can see from the picture uh, above, which is named the Birth of Venus, uh, she's the 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 character is not looking uh, at the audience, but the picture below of Olympia, she's looking directly. At the viewer uh, confronting me, which, which brings a sense of, of realism in the painting. Uh, the last picture that will be analyzed that will be Les Demoiselles d'Avignon. Uh, this 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 painting, sorry, this painting was was created by Pablo Picasso. Uh, he's an Italian painter that uh, who created the painting in 1907. So. The painter uh, shows uh, some women in a brother, like uh, a house of prostitutes, where you can by see that they are obviously prostitutes, uh, naked women standing there, others are crouching without uh, pieces of clothing. And it is uh, a cubism painting style because you can see the, 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 the figures are very sharp like they have sharp edges, which is called uh, a, a cubism painting style because it it takes a three-dimensional image and then breaks it down into a two-dimensional uh, image. You cannot see uh, a lot of illusion because it is a two-dimensional image. Uh, the only space that is created is between is the blue space between the 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 women on the on the right because you can see there's some blue space but which is almost claustrophobic which is which is small so so Pablo does not focus on creating an illusion of space he's he's only focusing on the on the women in the picture there's also a mixture of cultures in the painting because as you can see there 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 is also uh, the women on the right have their faces look like uh, African masks which, which symbolizes the France's colonization of Africa in the 19th century. The, the masks that were uh, taken actually from Africa were, were transported to the museums in France, and Picasso got his his inspiration for these for these faces from there. He deviates from the usual style of painting, which 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 is a lot of illusion. Uh, the, the the characters in the painting almost look real but then here you can see that this is clearly a painting uh, there's no much illusion illusion of space illusion of yeah 
you can see that even the uh, the women are confronting the the viewer with their eyes. They're not they're not looking away as in the other uh, pictures or uh, sorry paintings. Uh, what what Picasso tries to say here is that uh, women are the, the mean prostitutes are dangerous because uh, at that time he he used to fre frequent these the brothers this kind of uh, house of prostitutes and then he was like afraid of the kind of diseases he would get from there so these these sharp edges the sharp edges on the on the these women show that his his inner fear his internal fear of these women there's also the the African mass which symbolizes the the Francis colonization of Africa as said before in the 19th century because you can see these two women in these two paintings have like their faces are more like African masks the, the, those masks that came from Africa during the colonization and that were displayed in the Francis museums so to move along we're going to compare two pieces of art which is mainly the oath of the Horatia and the elevation of the cross. So as you can see from the both of the, from both of these pictures, the bodies are rigid and stiff. They they are very real. You you can have the impression that these bodies are real. You can see the shadows, the shadowing, the the muscles are are very detailed, and they are all focused on one activity. On the left, there is the 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 three three brothers that are. are like making a north to fight to the death and on the right there are the citizens who are struggling to raise uh, Jesus cross upright they are all focused on one activity uh, but there's there are some differences in those previous paintings we saw because in the in the painting of in the painting of the elevation of the cross the body represents uh, divinity as uh, portrayed by Jesus Christ, but in but in the oath of the Horatia, uh, the body present uh, patriotism, strength, uh, uh, resolution. Because the three brothers were very, very resolved to fight to the death for their countries. Uh, in addition, the in the elevation of the cross, uh, the the painting mainly displays the religious belief of the painter and. The, his environment at the time, but in the oath of the Horatia, the the painting mainly portrays uh, patriotism, patriotism, and a sense of revolution uh, that was uh, rep represented by the brothers that were ready to fight for their for their nation. Uh, so these paintings are. Uh, related to the to the uh, the the context, the historical and cultural context uh, that were there at the time, because in the version of the cross, uh, the, the religion was my, one of the main main topics in that time. And as said before, uh, the painter was from Paul Ruben. He was from Flanders, and his 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 religious belief was uh, Catholics. Uh, he was a Catholic, and also the the Catholic Church had asked him to paint the to, to make it create, to create the painting. So, yeah, it it shows the Catholic the, the religious belief at the time and at the location where it was painted. However, in the of the Horatia, the, the, it 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 mostly focuses on patriotism. A sense of patriotism because at the time even the painter was became actually became a, a, a revolutionist uh, himself uh, a few years after he had, had created painting so the painting mainly focuses on, on on a sense of patriotism that is shown by the three brothers uh, ready to fight you know, in addition, it the author of the Russia deviates from the previous painting styles because uh, 
the studies that was that were there in in France they were a rococo you paint they are not uh, they are not the same as the one seen in the author of the Horatia as you can compare from the two two paintings uh, uh, below and also there is a Flemish style seen in the detail of the elevation of the cross because I said before uh, the, the the painter Paul Rubin had some yeah, a Flemish background, which means he was compared, he was pushed, he was driven to, inc including uh, a lot of detail in in the in the pen that he was making. And so, as a conclusion, uh, artists use uh, their talents, their talent in art, to reveal their messages, and but then uh, they are the, the the pieces of art are made in different timelines and different uh, years so one has to, to understand the background concept the historical concept the cultural concept in order to analyze the painting and uh, understand its full meaning uh, thank you very much for your attention